You, I hope you all heard that. That happens to be the sound of two neutron stars, or two one mass, uh, sorry, one or two solar mass black holes going around each other. It's the same. Why that distinctive sound? What's happening? Well, what's going on here is that these are the two stars, and uh, and it's the Hulse Taylor objects at the end of their lives. That's really what it is. They're finally. They're fine. They're getting closer and closer and closer and closer, and they bop into so each other. So it's whoop. Okay. What you're going to hear is this thing, which is the actual instrument noise. And that, in spiral, is buried in that noise. And I want to find out how quickly, or not how quickly, when you can hear it. This is real life physics. Yeah. You got it. Good. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> so you have to dig now, that Now, that's the whole challenge. You have to dig noise. that out. And let me tell you something important. Your ear is a very good detector. It takes a lot of computing to get that, what you heard, out of that noise. You see, what it is, this, this instrument looks for not only the, the binary coalescences, which are these fancy words. They, they, it looks for things that go bump in the night, once in a while, like a supernova, but it also does things which, for example, and we're starting to do that now, where we're looking at the signals that are developed by the instrument and comparing them to signals coming out of, ra out of radio telescopes and out of optical telescopes. And in fact, there's a very big industry now in, in astronomy that is looking to uh, look at transients, things that are once in a while, things that happen once in a while, and they're comparing their records with the records coming out of this instrument. So we are beginning to you know, sniff at the, uh, the astronomy. So there's going to be a lot of coordination. There already is a lot of coordination, but it's going to get better and better. The other kind of sources is, in fact, uh, Andrea's source. They will radiate gravitational waves on their own. They, are, they may be a little bit oblate. They may be a little look like American footballs. And when they do that and rotate, they radiate gravitational waves, and very interesting ones. And then lastly, there is another source, which is the fact that the universe itself, you know, the early primeval universe might have generated gravitational waves. The, the, the very early ones everybody now thinks might be there came from inflation, which is a particular model of the initial moments of the universe. It could also be that during that inflation and a little bit after, uh, other kinds of gravitational waves were generated. And they will come in, and they're coming in all the time. And our detectors, if we have multiple of them, It'll be a common no noise, a common noise in both of the detectors, or all five detectors that are operating. And you look for that common noise against the intrinsic noise in the detectors themselves. And you do that by something called cross-correlating the detectors. And how far back is that going to that's, allow us that's to That's 10 see? to the 10 years. That's, uh, that's 10 billion years with these. With the gravity All the way waves. back. Yeah. And the reason being gravity waves aren't stopped by anything. Stopped They're also very anything. hard to detect, but you get a bonus. They go all the way back. 